Hey guys, Milk here, back with another video. Before we head into it, why don't you do me a favor and go down and like and subscribe, and let's get into it. I'm actually re-recording this video right now because my previous recording was not really coherent. It was just kind of schizo ramblings at that point, me just complaining about random things. So hopefully this uh, voiceover has a little bit more direction and is more focused. But the reason I wanted to make this video is because I recently started doing the thing, and you might be asking like, well, what's the thing? Uh, what I'm referring to is just kind of staring at my Steam library and all the available games I have for hours, not really having anything to play, just switching from looking at games on Steam to play to YouTube, you know, and back and forth and back and forth. It seems now that I am waiting for games to come out that can fill that void or space in my brain that can occupy me for hours on end. Like, you know, back then when we were spoiled with game releases seeming, seemingly every month that would come out and there were always bangers dropping. But I also think that the reason I want to make this video is because of all the lackluster video game products that have been releasing for quite some time now. And I think the tipping point for me was the one that I tried most recently, and that's Starfield. Now, you don't have to click off. This isn't going to be like a huge rant on Starfield or anything, because there's like 500 million videos on that. But I wanted to just point it out. You know, another game that's been in development for years, in the literal instant I booted it up and played it for a bit, I thought, you know, this just feels like Fallout 4. Starfield was a huge flaw for me coming from a Bethesda fan, not just like a fan of Skyrim, but Morrowind, Oblivion, Skyrim, Fallout 1 and 2, Fallout New Vegas 3, Fallout 4. It just felt like what Fallout 4 should have been when it released all those years ago. This game didn't really reflect the work they claim went into it and all the advertising they put into it. Another experience I had, and I could feel people hovering the dislike button already, is uh, Tears of the Kingdom. I'm a huge Legend of Zelda fan. Uh, it's my favorite series of all time, and I did love Breath of the Wild, but Tears of the Kingdom just felt like a DLC for Breath of the Wild, with more polish and some additional things. Even after like 60 to 80 hours in the game of finishing it, I got really bored and just had no feeling of replaying it at all. It just, it just felt like it, again, it didn't reflect all the years, you know, that have been put into the game in quotes. And another one, uh, Diablo 4, is, it's, it's just Diablo 4. I see, I got like just completely bored of it and left. And then I've been watching videos, you know, such as from Asmongold. Um, you know, judging from the videos I've seen on Diablo 4, it seems like they probably should have put all that money that they put into advertising and put getting pop stars to do stuff for Diablo 4 into the actual game itself instead of just advertising it. But this isn't to say that all games aren't going well. We got the Dead Space remake and the Resident Evil 4 remake. We got some indie titles like Hi-Fi Rush and Viewfinder, which absolutely blew my mind. I know some people don't consider Hi-Fi Rush an indie title, but I do. We got a brand new 2D or I think like 2.5D, I'm not really quite sure, Mario game that I think might be one of the best ones ever created. CD Projekt Red actually finally released a product that functions along with a DLC and a huge update to make their game all better. And of course, we can't forget about probably one of the largest game releases in a while. Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate 3 is hands down one of the greatest games I've ever played, and I'm not a fan of turn-based combat at all, but that game absolutely has sucked me in for hours and hours and hours with the, the amount of choices, the variety in the game, as well as just how the game functions and feels with very little uh, bugs, either graphically or throughout the gameplay. And something I also see online, and you know, others talking shit or coping about like their own products or products they like, you know, like, why, why are you defending the mediocre slop that they use to shovel into people's mouth each year in order to hit the revenue target. Why talk shit about games that show that developers can actually put out great products if they try? Some of these games have probably been in development as long as like Starfield or Diablo 4 or Tears of the Kingdom, and they just absolutely blow them out of the water. And you know, from looking at the way that certain developers, like actual developers, game developers, talk shit online about other games, it seems to me that this isn't all about management when it comes down to how video games are coming out as beta tests or just absolute dog shit. For a long time, people have been saying, you know, oh, it's just management um, making a game like this and making it like that. I'm starting to think it's not really like that. I'm starting to think that it's just people that don't really take pride in their own work as well, coupled with garbage management. So why talk shit about games that show um, how to make these products actually viable and great? How about instead of talking shit about a video game and you know how like you didn't like their UI or how you would have done something different, how about instead of doing that, you actually take some pride in your work and put out a product that you can be proud of. From a consumer's perspective as well, we should be a lot more judgmental of what comes out. The gaming industry is now like making more money than the music and movie industries combined total. And uh, I'm pretty sure that makes it the largest entertainment industry, but I could be wrong on that. 
The industry has basically just become flooded with people who don't care about video games at all, at all or anything related to them and just wants to take advantage of the fact that the video game industry is one of those that people can just go out and they will always buy the product because it sits as like a luxury price point but to the point where people don't have to save up weeks and weeks and weeks in order to get it you know maybe like um i don't know like a brand new like firearm or um maybe like a tv or something like that and it's just one of those things that for years and years, people will just go out and buy it because it has like either it's the next in a series or, you know, they just hear some good things about it and they want to test it out. Um, I think it's getting a lot better for people to be cautious of products. And also, you know, it's a lot easier to get a refund for your product now with Steam where you can um, play for like, you know, under two hours to kind of see how the game is and then you might be able to refund it. Uh, I haven't had an issue with it, but I've heard that some people's refunds got denied, but I've never had that happen at all. And that kind of just turns into people getting taken advantage of, aka us, the consumer, and people defending it um, online through comments. But the actual real people defending this are the silent majority. And that's not like, you know, me being, you know, memeing about like, oh, the silent sheep. But it really is that. The people that would just go out and buy it like a robot whenever something comes out, like the newest 2K games, even though if you go look at all the reviews, they're always trash apparently and filled with hackers or people buying the latest Call of Duty when it turns out to just be a $70 DLC, you need to hop through 30 menus to even open when the new Call of Duty sh should have actually been released um, and that content should have been the previous Call of Duty. So what is the point of this video? I think the point of this is just me bitching and complaining. No, but... In all seriousness, uh, I'm tr I'm just getting really, really, really sick and tired of the slop that's being pushed out, and I think others are as well. Um, people are a lot more uh, vocal with their opinions, and people um, can actually see that you know the time frame for development for some of these games. People can actually put out very, very good products like Baldur's Gate 3, kind of just wiping a whole bunch of people out of the water with um, the level of, I guess, love that they put into their creation. And I think with that, people are starting to get more respect for themselves as a consumer and what they decide that they deserve. Um, so yeah, hopefully, um, again, this isn't like a super hating video. This is just kind of my experience that I've had with um, playing games throughout basically my whole life. Pretty much owned like every Nintendo handheld console, uh, almost all of their normal um, uh, actual cartridge consoles. Um, a lot of stuff from Sega, pretty much every single PlayStation from PS1 all the way to now, every Xbox, you know, I've, I've been doing it all, especially PC gaming as well. And, uh, hopefully throughout, you know, maybe next year and the coming future, we can actually get games where, you know, um, they actually reflect the care and the love put into the industry that has been previously before it started becoming so popular. So yeah, let me know down in the comments below your thoughts on the video. Let me know as well what games kind of disappointed you this year and anything you're looking forward to. And yeah, peace.